Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and I wanted to introduce you today to what might possibly be my most well-rounded build ever even, and that is Scourge Arrow Poison Pathfinder. Now when I say most well-rounded, I mean it's got the best offense, defense, and budget combination to make a completely smooth buttery play of a character versus the current challenges available to us in the Legion League. That is mapping, endgame content, and some delve. Now I have yet to take it all the way through the endgame, but it does show promise and I'm pretty sure it will be a character that um, provides more than enough DPS to take everything on rather smoothly while having some of quite possibly the best defense I've ever had or mitigation from a character and then as well as that uh, has not a very st uh, huge budget involved because it just uses some pretty simple items and the main weapon um, in question is a dark scorn which is a rather cheap and uh, accessible bow um, in the current league anyway. So traditionally for the past few leagues Scourge Arrow has been played as a flat elemental stacking build. Uh, you just grab a bunch of you know abyssal jewels, flat elemental damage wherever you can and then stack it high and it becomes a very strong boss killer and mapper altogether. Uh, it was designed as a physical and chaos type skill that should have some good poison synergy but it wasn't really ever used that way because uh, well it kind of sucked to begin with in the scaling and then the items for it are just a little bit too hard to get I think. Ever since Delve League though you can make some pretty nutty bows and then ever since this Dark Scorn change this current league it's become a very accessible and a very successful build. Um, Dark Scorn got changed in 3.7 to have an extra 20% chance to poison enemies for 300% more damage. So it's similar to the Delve Poison mod uh, from Corroded Fossils that does 60% to do 100% more. As a matter of fact, it should numerically line up exactly the same, but it comes on a bow that already does 300 physical DPS, um, some decent attack speed, and then it converts some of your physical to chaos, as well as um, letting you take some of your physical as chaos damage too, 25% to be precise. Now when you stack that with the Divine Flesh Keystone, which is one of the new corrupted um, keystones from the Glorious Vanity Jewels, you can make a pretty tanky character. Uh, Divine Flesh lets you stack your Chaos Res up to 85, it gives you 10% max Chaos Res, and then converts 50% of the elemental damage you take into Chaos. So if you cap out your Chaos Res like I have in this character, a good portion of your physical and elemental will be then taken as Chaos and it should net in a reduction of damage to both types by a pretty substantial amount. So this character with a lot of dodge, a lot of evasion, and then a lot of actual damage reduction has ended up being probably one of the most um, highly mitigated characters I've ever built and it wasn't really that hard to do. It was just simply having a Dark Scorn and then getting Chaos Res in um, like four or five pieces of gear using a extremely crap Glorious Vanity Jewel. It doesn't actually provide me with any benefit besides the Keystone. And overall, there's nothing specifically hard to make or get in this build. Uh, you can take it a lot higher. You can min-max your character, your gear, your jewels, um, your bow even to much higher levels if you really like. But I'm going to be just using some of the more basic items or um, principles of the build to showcase how well it can do and will do. And ultimately, I do want to keep a Dark Scorn just for that reduced physical damage into Chaos. Since uh, Legion League is a little bit um, high on the heavy hit side, and I definitely want to be fairly tanky against all of that. We can go a lot higher in life, we can go a lot higher in damage. So far though, I'm something like 2 to 3 million poison damage with a little bit of ramp involved. Nowhere near as much as the Viper Strike, because it's not based entirely around huge duration. Um, but you can see here, this is my currently deepest delve, something like 280. Um, and it is a lich boss and it goes down pretty damn quick. The playstyle is very fluid, you run around fairly quickly, you have a couple of different uh, travel skills, the blink and the dash, and they are reduced on cooldown thanks to the passive tree. Um, 
the damage is really quite nice as well and I do think that um, by the end of it we'll be clearing five ways rather efficiently and doing extremely deathless uber elders because scourge arrow playstyle just lends itself to uh, uber elder killing quite nicely especially thanks to mirage archer which you can see atop the character is basically always going to be attacking for you even when you're running around and that is a quite a lot of the uh, uber elder fight so scourge arrow characters are pretty damn good at killing uber elder and dealing with most end game and this one here has some of the best sustain and mitigation i've ever had while maintaining some of the best damage so i do want to go over how i've built this character so far and um well talk a bit more praise about scourge arrow and uh, how it's a little bit different from previous scourge arrows i've done in the past so here is our character at the moment, level 91, called I don't have hits, can't evade. Craft, I don't have it. People ask for it a lot. I still don't have it. Uh, level 91, Pathfinder. It is based around uh, Scourge Arrow, Poison, and the cornerstone of our build is a Dark Scorn Bow. As seen here, like I mentioned, it's just a bunch of physical, but in the past, um, well, in this league, it did have the mod 20% chance for poisons inflicted with this weapon to deal 300% more damage added to it. And like I said, it's very similar to the Delve Corroded Fossils, which do 60% chance for 100% more. Should be about the same amount of damage, but uh, obviously you don't have to craft this at all. Whereas the Delve Fossil Bows, you should be able to craft um, fairly efficiently on uh, just regular physical thicket bows, ideally on an Elder um, Thicket that can then get Vicious Projectiles as one of its links. Uh, or as a built-in seventh link, and that's how it competes with this sort of bow. But otherwise, they are kind of tough to craft those things combined. Whereas this, anywhere from like a 1 to a 10C bow, depending on the roll you can get, this is a really good roll. So uh, it'll probably be something like 30 to 40C, at least around the time I was buying it. Uh, so this is the cornerstone of the build combined with using a uh, glorious vanity um, in the name of Zib Zibakwa and it then gets you Divine Flesh. So all damage taken bypasses Energy Shield, no big deal, we don't have any Energy Shield, but then 50% of elemental damage taken as Chaos tend to max Chaos Resist. So all things equal, if you have 75 of all resists and 75 of Chaos Resist, 50% of your elemental damage then taken as Chaos won't actually do anything, right? But since you have 10 to max Chaos Res, if you can cap out your Chaos Res, uh, all of your elemental resist then gets taken, uh, or half of that elemental resistance then gets uh, applied to chaos, which would be a reduced amount of damage compared to normal, and thus it is a pretty large damage um, absorption technique combined with the fact that we have 25% of physical damage taken from hits taken as chaos. If you currently have 0% physical damage reduction, which I roughly do, then uh, this is a pretty big boost indeed. Uh, not quite 25%, should be something like a flat 20% um, reduction in physical damage uh, when it's converted over to our Divine Flesh and Chaos Resistance. And it makes for a very tanky character considering I have 50% evasion as well, uh, sorry, dodge as well, 30% um, spell dodge, 30% evasion, and also um, running Witchfire Brew, which blinds enemies, got blind on a quiver as well. Overall, you do like have some pretty good tools for avoidance, for mitigation, and then recovery as well, because um, I'm also running uh, Stabbing Thirst, these new dagger nodes over here that have leech, and uh, converted that with Lion Eyes Fall. Now, we don't have to do that. You can definitely start with the leech nodes over here. And I did do that for a little bit, but this is just slightly more efficient because uh, it takes an extra point, um, but it does give you a little bit of damage converted from the dagger nodes as well. And besides those uniques, there's nothing really too strictly required about the build. Uh, the rest is just kind of rare items that um, I'm trying to get uh, you know, good resists as well as chaos resist on, so it can end up being a little bit costly if you're trying to manage a huge amount of damage, a huge amount of life, and resist. And uh, you also really do want some minus mana cost of skills uh, attached to these sorts of items. Uh, on this one, I have a temple mod that has um, the mana and minus mana cost, and then that frees me up to craft chaos damage. Whereas on this one, it's just a ring that you then put minus mana cost of skills onto, because um, 
Scourge Arrow having just about no mana cost is an extremely nice play style, whereas if you have something like 10 or more mana cost, it will drain your mana, and it means you can't really pre-fire like this before a boss fight, uh, before a boss spawns, before some enemies spawn, and uh, it is a much nicer play style to be able to pre-fire whenever you need, however you need. Uh, so that's what's going on with Scourge Arrow. I do really recommend getting some minus mana cost stuff, but you can of course manage if you've got a slightly bigger mana pool uh, and a little bit of mana leech like we do currently in the build. Um, aside from that though, we are just getting life and resists everywhere we can. That's a temple modded chest, which was extremely cheap. It's something like this is 10c or some shit. And um, there's nothing special about it. Just a bunch of life, a little bit of res, but you are looking for chaos res in plenty of items. Uh, this is a fossil crafted helm that has um, 29 chaos res on it. And this just crafted with uh, pristines and aberrant fossils, the two combo. Uh, ideally also looking for that minus nine chaos res. And if you can, a spare suffix for this really nice focus mod, 140% increased duration of ailments you inflict while focused. Now that is a huge fo uh, focus mod on our, um, or towards our poison damage. And it's extremely cheap to get uh, to attach to a helm. You just need a spare suffix. And then combo to the fact that I've got this 36 attack speed while focused as well. Every time we press the focus button, we gain a massive amount of extra damage. If you look at my path of building right now, it's about 2 million damage. This is a fairly reliable, fairly consistent 2 million. Every time we press focus, we're going up by almost double getting quite close to double, we're not quite there. You drop your banner as well, and you have a situational double amount of damage thanks to banner and focus combined, which is usually when you're pressing your big buttons to get um, your boss DPS in, and that should be enough to kill just about anything out there. So the focus mod here is quite important, and this one, it's okay, not uh, strictly necessary, but it does help a little bit as well with the smoothness of stacking to five stacks and unleashing. Now, one important thing I do want to mention about Scourge Arrow is previously I have never done the bows fire an additional arrow uh, strategy with it. Currently, what happens with your Scourge Arrow, if you click anywhere without that mod, you will shoot um, all of your Scourges in a straight line. And that happens every time, no matter where you click, um, if you don't have an additional arrow. If you do have an additional arrow, you then shoot two main arrows. And what happens is your pods want to spread between those two arrows. So if you click far away still, um, it's pretty localized because both your arrows are shooting together and you will still shoot in a straight line. But if you target next to yourself and you're standing next to a boss, the arrows split and the pods then split and they will split around a boss. So additional arrow like this gives you the flexibility to choose whether or not you want to attack normally and have a just straight line go out and spread and thus pretty good clear speed. Or if you want to attack um, close by to you and have an increase in damage against bosses, because once they're spread around the boss, uh, you have a much higher chance of all of those um, projectiles from the pods hitting the boss at the same time. So it does pay off, I think, to get an additional arrow. I don't think it's strictly necessary because uh, it might just result in a couple of extra pods hitting. Um, but I do think it's worth doing because it's not very hard to do. Just grab any freaking quiver like this um, off of a base item level 80 or higher on Shaper bases. Um, alteration up a bit, Regal. Craft some life if you need to or some attack speed. Whatever the hell um, stuff you can. Ideally, you could just multi-mod around a bow's attack additional arrow um, mod and make a pretty nice quiver. I chose to not do that just because I hit an okay regal and I want to um, demonstrate that it's not very expensive. But you can multi-mod around a bow's additional um, arrow quiver and make a much better one than this. Besides that, the only other real um, expensive or sort of little bit of a game changer is the Scourge Arrow it creates additional spore at max stages. Currently it still functions in that um, it will create a spore on any stage. So if you just right click once, there's two spores right there. Right click once, two spores. One spore, just because we didn't get far enough uh, into the channel. But if you get any sort of stacks, um, it will create an additional spore and it is some pretty nice quality of life for um, just clearing a little bit faster if you're really going for the little tap and shoot play style. Whereas for the most part, I'm actually running around getting to three, four, five stacks and then um, releasing. 
So it's not a big deal for me, I don't think, but it is just a little bit nicer to have an additional um, spore pod. Now, as far as the main links are concerned for our Scourge Arrow, we have Scourge Arrow attached to, I'd say in order of importance, Mirage Archer, added chaos damage, uh, deadly ailments, vile toxins, and then infused channeling. Infused channeling is really nice and will make us take reduced chaos damage when it's infused, but it does require you to stand still to pretty much your five stacks, uh, and then you'll get the infusion up. So it won't always be up during map clear, but I do highly recommend using this one, especially if you're stacking the uh, chaos res for divine flesh. And um, it is very important to get quality on this because it does lower the infusion channeling uh, time on the um, sort of infusion buff. So I'd recommend getting quality on that. It's pretty damn important in the end. And uh, I didn't really go with it until my um, sixth link because uh, it's fairly costly and does change your playstyle just a little bit. And it's also just going to make sure... Uh, it makes it so you really need these mana costs in chance because up until then, your Scourge Arrow should be just about free off of... Uh, even just like one good enchant. Uh, once you get the sixth link on, you really do need both of those minus mana costs to be able to sustain your casts. Uh, we then have Enlighten, Malevolence, War Banner, Herald of Agony. Uh, Malevolence for the extra damage, Herald of Agony just for some poison stuff. Got a really low level precision. We then have our aura set up here with Enlighten level 3, Malevolence, War Banner, Herald of Agony. Malevolence for the extra damage and with the Watcher's Eye mod it does make it uh, pretty damn worth rolling. Um, damaging ailments inflict, uh, you inflict deal 15% faster while affected by Malevolence. Um, then Agony, just a little bit of extra poison. You don't really have to use it. Could use something like Aspect of the Spider instead if you really want, but I'm happy with this guy. And really low level precision just for a little bit of extra accuracy. Um, the setup down here is just Blink Arrow and Dash with Stone Golem. You then have Multi Totem, um, Wither, and Spell Totem attached to increased duration. You want to make sure you're positioning these pretty carefully in certain boss fights and encounters so that they're not dying and um, getting the Withered buff up against enemies, which is a huge damage increase against uh, for your um, Chaos and Poison damage. And then I really didn't know what to do with my 5 link or 6 link in chest. And I just slapped together a bunch of cast when damage takens. So we have um, cast when damage taken attached to phase run and immortal call, as well as increased duration. And then vile haste uh, in the middle here, which I'm yet to press. But for certain encounters, I'm going to press my uh, blood rage and then just put on vile haste here as an extra buff. And, you know, blood rage should sustain by itself most of the time. Uh, and not need any reapplication, and then Vile Haste gives you that extra little bit of boost, uh, as well as your focus button there. Um, for the Abyssal Jewel in the center here, just went for a little bit of accuracy, life resists, um, and it is pretty hard to fill out resists across the board, especially if you're going for the Chaos Resist, so I did have to get that on my jewels as well. Uh, not this one, but this one over here, 8 to all resist. And uh, this does give a little bit of resist as well because um, this uh, glorious vanity always changes the little nodes everywhere into something different. And this gives just a little bit of cold res. But if you really want, you can try and get the right roll on these Zibakwa um, jewels to do something like this sort of stuff. Uh, chaos damage and 25% chance to inflict withered for two seconds on hit. Now, as you can see, I have one type over here and I did play around with it for a bit. Uh, it's only three points and then I get 25% chance for withered on hit. Um, I end up taking it out because I don't think 25% is significant enough. If you end up having like three of these to maybe two or three of these to take within your circle that you manage to get, then it's probably decent enough to stack. But the amount of times that I'm going to actually uh, use this or utilize this during map clears and against, you know, random bosses, just I don't think is going to be high enough at a 25% chance. Because if I just drop out one spore pod arrow, maybe I'll get a couple of withered stacks on something. But whenever I'm actually going to be getting um, into a boss fight where I can drop my wither totems, they're going to be doing all the withering anyway. So it's only if you can get a really high amount, I think, um, stacked together that it should be worth it because at that point, the trash that you're clearing and the random bosses that you are fighting will probably have a much more reliable amount of withered stacks getting um, put on from this type of shit. But 
I just didn't think it was worth it. So in the end, this is just a very basic glorious vanity that does nothing but change to divine flesh. As far as our um, Pathfinder shit goes, you definitely want these four points first. They let you become chaos very early on and poison. Um, then I went with nature's boon and I went with the attack speed and movement speed Though you could easily justify a master alchemist so you can be uh, immune to all ailments I don't think it's particularly necessary because uh, I take a vastly reduced amount of damage from all of them And then I started trying to run Kiara's determination to uh, make up the difference in freeze chill curse on a silver flask instead um, it's not super reliable, it's not 100% uptime, but it is up most of the time, and it's good enough, I think, that I'm going to keep playing around with it, at least for now. Uh, there's still a bunch of min-max you can do with the passive tree and quality of life that you can choose to get yourself. Things like freedom of movement uh, for phasing, things like more attack and um, movement speed. You can easily get more channel attack speed and a bit of recovery and stuff. I'm currently working towards Fleetfoot for even more movement speed and cooldown recovery of skills. You can get some onslaught action down here. There's quite a lot of choices in a build like this to um, customize to your own sort of needs. And something I might do personally is drop a little bit of damage from here, ditch this entire sort of area going this way, and possibly go up this way because then I can hit 6,600 life or so, maybe even 7k by level 95. And that would make for an extremely tanky character and quite one hell of a playstyle. So that's it for the kind of guide on this character. I think that's covered just about everything I need to. I kill all bandits, by the way. Um, and yeah, hopefully I'll have some really nice uh, end game single target to show off and some play style uh, in the next video. But so far this character has been an absolute joy to play and I do recommend checking out some Scourge Arrow, especially in the poison market with a Dark Scorn. Um, it'll be fun to try and stack Chaos Res and then become immune to all the Chaos shit in the game right now, which is quite a novelty because... Um, there's some out there, and it's pretty annoying. Things like temples and incursions. Um, just you won't even care about any of that chaos damage, and it's kind of hilarious. So thank you very much for watching. hope you enjoyed the video, and see you next time.